हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू स्टैंडर्ड सेवन जनरल साइंस डिजिटल क्लास हैव यू एवर सीन और फेल्ट स्पार्क्स ड्यूरिंग द विंटर व्हेन द एयर इज ड्राई एंड यू टच अ मेटालिक ऑब्जेक्ट और व्हेन यू रब अ वुलन ब्लैंकेट विद योर क्लोथ्स इन डार्क you should definitely do this the amount of sparks that go off will amaze you sometimes when you come inside from the cold and pull off a woolen hat your hair stands on end tv screen soon becomes dusty a plastic comb or ruler rubbed on dry hair attracts pieces of paper Have you ever noticed all these instances? These instances are of static electricity. So today we are going to learn about static electricity and hence we are starting with our lesson number 8 static electricity that is electricity at rest. I hope you all have your textbooks with you. you all know matter that is everything around us is made up of tiny particles called atoms and electric charge is the intrinsic property of these particles or atoms whatever you see around us can be divided into smaller and smaller parts until you finally reach a part you can't divide further this is known as an atom inside an atom there is stationary positive charge and moving negative charges as you can see here in this picture you can see pink dots moving in circular orbits these are representing negative charge and yellow and green dots at the center represent static or stationary positive charge we shall be looking at the details of atomic structure later at this stage it is sufficient to know that an atom has stationary positive charge and moving negative charges these two charges are balanced in an atom hence an atom is electrically neutral so what is an electric charge an electric charge is the electrical property of matter that creates a force between objects the attracting or repelling behavior of a material so if an atom itself has no overall charge it is neutral then how do objects become electrically charged static electricity refers to an imbalance between the negative and the positive charge on a body for example when certain objects are rubbed against each other as positive charge is stationary so negative charge can be exchanged one object gives up negative charges and becomes more positively charged while the other object which collects the negative charge becomes more negatively charged every object has its tendency to become negatively or positively charged as you can see here in the picture before rubbing the two objects are neutral and after rubbing due to friction one object becomes negatively charged and other object becomes positively charged if we rub an end of a glass rod against a silk cloth 
glass loses negative charge and silk grabs the negative charge from the glass atoms so after rubbing glass rod becomes positively charged and the silk becomes negatively charged as you can see here now suspend this rod freely in air with the help of a thread and charge another glass rod in the same manner and bring it near the suspended rod you will see the two rods push each other as you can see in this picture now rub a plastic rod against the woolen cloth plastic has the opposite tendency to that of glass so plastic rod becomes negatively charged leaving the woolen cloth positively charged now bring the negative charged plastic rod near the positively charged suspended glass rod what do you see the two rods attract each other so we learn from the first experiment that like charges repel or move away from each other this is called repulsion and we learn from the second experiment that unlike charges attract each other this is known as attraction the scientist benjamin franklin named the electric charges positive charge and negative charge now come to page number 53 of your textbook see the box do you know about 2500 years ago a greek scientist named thales found that feathers are attracted towards a rod of yellow colored amber which had been rubbed against a woolen cloth amber is called electron in the greek language therefore this property of amber to attract things was named electricity by thomas browne in 1646 ad you can see the pictures of thales and thomas browne now come to try this apparatus a few straws woolen cloth glass bottle processor place a straw on a bottle take another straw near it observe what happens leave the straw on the bottle as it is rub the other straw against a woolen cloth and take it near the straw on the bottle observe what happens now take two straws and rub them against woolen cloth at the same time keep one of the straws on the bottle and take the other near it see what happens keep the rubbed straw on the bottle as it is take the woolen cloth on which it was rubbed close to it record your observations in each of the above processes in the chart a charged straw is taken near the uncharged straw then there will be attraction and inference is electrically charged objects attract uncharged objects when two straws carrying similar charges are brought near each other then there will be repulsion the inference is there is repulsion between like electric charges a charged straw and the oppositely charged cloth which was used for rubbing are brought near each other then there will be attraction inference is attraction between unlike electric charges there are three ways to charge an object charging by friction that is by rubbing the experiment of charging glass rod by rubbing with silk cloth 
and plastic road by rubbing with woolen cloth about which we have learnt is based on charging by friction. The second method is charging by conduction. It involves touching of a charged particle to a conductive material that allows the flow of charge through it. In this way, negative charges are transferred from the charged material to the uncharged material. Third method is charging by induction. It is a charging method that charges an object without actually touching the object to any other charged object. In this process, the charged particle is held near an uncharged material and the uncharged material develops an opposite charge. So now let's see how to charge an object by contact or conduction. Rub a plastic comb against paper or your dry hair in dry weather. The comb gets positively charged. Due to imbalance of charges and this creates static electricity which then attracts pieces of paper as you can see here. The comb is positively charged when it is rubbed and after being positively charged it attracts pieces of paper. You can charge the comb by rubbing against your hair also. Now let's see how to charge an object by induction. When you rub a balloon or a comb against a cloth, it becomes negatively charged. When this negatively charged balloon or comb is brought near to the thin trickle of water from a tap, the water's negative charge moves away from the negative charge of the balloon and that part of water becomes positively charged due to a deficiency of negative charge. The balloon has negative charge and the water has positive charge. As you know, unlike charges attract each other. So this causes water to bend as you can see in this picture. Similarly, a charged balloon sticks to a wall because the negative charges on the wall are repelled away from the balloon and the positive charges are attracted to the balloon. This gives a force of attraction between the balloon and the wall. All these experiments should be performed in dry weather, particularly in winter, because the charges are absorbed in moist air. Now read the lesson thoroughly from page number 51 to 54 and mark the important points. Thank you.